the book of Genesis, we're told that when God had finished making the world, he saw it and it was good. And one of the interesting things there is that God says that it looks good even before human beings have come on the scene. The diversity, the interdependence and interaction of life in the world is good in itself. And that means that a world of rich diversity is part of God's purpose. One of my favorite books of the Bible is the book of Job. And one of the many messages that come through God's speeches towards the end of the book is that, is that the world is not here entirely for our benefit. So Job is asked lots of questions he can't answer about wild animals, like what's the gestation period of a mountain goat? He hasn't a clue. To him, a mountain goat is just a silhouette on the distant craggy horizon. And then there's that lovely verse about, about the rain, where God says that he makes rain fall on a land where no one lives. And those speeches, one of the things they're doing is lifting us out of an, an anthropocentric rut and telling us that we need a theocentric view of creation, a God-centered view. <laughs> Hi, I'm David Moss and the Vicar of St Michael's and All Angels down there. I've been here for about 14 years. I wear a wedding ring because I've got a responsibility to my wife. Not just a responsibility, I love her. And I love God too because he gave us this beautiful planet with its green grass and its flowers and everything else. And it's my responsibility, I was created the image of God to look after this planet. And it's my responsibility to do that well. And when we put the solar cells up, people came and chatted to me and I said, well, it's not just about solar cells, it's about protecting our environment. What we could do with is some trees and things to encourage the bee population. We've only just started, okay? So we've got three fruit trees. Two were planted six months ago. We had one apple. It's gone now. <laughs> so we picked it. We had one apple this year from this tree here. That's all. But it, it's small steps. And slowly, over 10 years, we'll have loads and loads of fruit trees. And that will help boost our bee population and also encourage other people and churches around and community buildings to think about green planting. Okay, well here we are at Sacred Heart Battersea and it's uh, a cold December morning and we've just laid our green roof. It's a sedum roof and it will settle in and become a living space with hopefully plenty of uh, insects and all sorts of stuff in there as well as a bit of a visual effect for the local neighbours as well. Yeah. And we're hoping it takes, it's December, we hope the weather won't ruin it. Um, and so we're quite delighted and um, we think that uh, it will be a witness and a statement to uh, quite a number of people in the area. Well, I'm here to celebrate graveyards. Graveyards are amazing places for wildlife. It's the middle of winter, it's a very, very cold morning, but already the first signs of spring are here. Now have a look at this. This is one of the first flowering plants to come out. And this one's really, really important. The snowdrop. Because if it's mild at this time of the year, we will get some insect activity, particularly from bees. This plant can become vital. It's an early source of food for it that will make the difference between life and death for something like a bumblebee. Now obviously the graveyard has to be kept fairly tidy. People are visiting, but there are little wild places in graveyards where wildlife can actually coexist with that tidiness. Every parish in the UK has a graveyard. If we put all those graveyards together, what an amazing living landscape we have. I've only been in this graveyard about half an hour and already I've seen a lot of different species of wildlife. 
and the potential of all the church lands in the United Kingdom is amazing for wildlife. We can really unlock biodiversity. If you're a bit confused about what you can do to help wildlife, don't forget there are many different organisations that will give you advice. But the main message from this is that this graveyard and the other church lands around the United Kingdom can be extremely important for people, but also very important for wildlife. Often as a bishop, when I'm celebrating confirmation, youngsters come and I ask them, what name have they chosen? Many of them say, Francis. So I always say, why Francis? And they say, because he was the saint who loved the animals, which is true. But then I always add, but please remember, he loved the animals because he loved God first. So we have a great care for the created world and all its diverse species. And we also have a duty to promote and protect that world. And you know, we can all play our part. We can have bird boxes, we can have ways of assisting animals through difficult periods and giving them an environment in which they flourish. When we care for the earth, we care for each other as well, because it is one created order of which we are a part. So, love of neighbour, care for animals, this is God's creation and we do well to understand and promote that in our own lives. So if we want to honour the way God sees the world, good in its diversity, then our own care for biodiversity in our immediate environment, our churchyards, our church property, that becomes part of what we owe to God, what we owe to God's creation. That becomes part of our message to a world which is all too often tempted to take the short-term view and not to think of that wonderful interconnectedness of all things in the middle of which God has placed us. Mm -hmm.